All right. Anytime now, recording device. The spinning wheel of death. All right. Well, it'll record when it's ready. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Now it's recording. All right. So. It would be nice if there was something on the screen. There we go. Okay. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, here is our itinerary for today. We're going to finish our stamped tile. Some of you finished them yesterday, uh, and that's fine. Some of you didn't finish them yesterday, and that's fine too. You're going to get work done today. Um, now, some of you have had me for ceramics A during distance learning, and so you know that the way I ask kids to turn in their projects now, even though you're here in person, is to record a video of them. And so the kids who are at home, that's the only way that they're going to be able to turn their projects in. So that's how you're going to turn your projects in as well. You're going to record a video of it. And I'm going to explain, and actually I'll show you an example of what I want your video to look like. Um, you're going to be doing that today. People at home, you're going to do it at home. People here, you're going to do it here. Um, I'm also going to talk about how to write an artist's statement and why we write an artist statement. And I'm going to give you a very simple prompt that you can use to write your own artist statement. And that's the second part of what you'll be doing um, to turn in today for your tile. It's kind of like when you were in Ceramics A, when, when we were here in person, I had you write in your notebook and you wrote an artist statement in your notebook. Now I've kind of simplified it down a little bit and now it's gonna, you're gonna just be writing it digitally is the only difference. Um, so you'll be doing that, I'll go over what that looks like. Then I'm gonna introduce the plate project. That is your next project. You're gonna be making uh, either like a small dessert plate or salad plate, or you might be making a big dinner plate, or maybe you'll choose to make like a, a bigger like um, chips and salsa kind of plate. It's really kind of up to you what sort of plate you make. And I'll talk about that. And then we're gonna finish up today with sketching three ideas for your plate project. Cause you will have to put a design on the plate. So your, your plate outline isn't really gonna change. Like the plate is the plate, uh, but your designs might change. So three different ideas for that new plate project. And that's our day. So first, let me talk about finishing your tiles. Um, so uh, you're going to finish them today by, uh, if you didn't do this yesterday, um, finishing both sides, stamping your designs on both sides of all the tiles. And I don't think I said this yesterday, um, so if you didn't do this, it's okay. But whatever the design is that you did on one side, it should probably be that same design on the other side. So there's some unity between both sides as this hangs in the breeze. But if you want to do one design on one tile and then a different design on another tile, that's fine. These don't have to match, but the fronts and backs of each sh should ideally match. Okay. Again, if you didn't do it that way, I don't think I told you that yesterday, so it's okay. But if you're just doing it for the first time today, if you're doing back sides today, um, maybe try to make them match. Also, don't forget to, to carve the hole through it so these can actually hang, even if you know you're not going to fire them. And so, you know, technically you're not making a wind chime. You need to make it as though you were gonna fire it. And I might decide, even if you don't wanna keep the tiles, I might keep them to use as, as test tiles. So, um, so I do want the, the holes in there part of what I'm grading you on. Um, then, even if your tiles are bone dry, I want you to smooth the edges one more time. We really wanna make sure that those edges are smooth, no little spurs sticking up that will be sharp after firing. Smooth the fronts, smooth the backs, everything. Uh, just smooth it up and make it look really good. Um, and then, this is going to be tricky, but to the best of your ability, take a needle tool or at home, take a toothpick and carve your initials in the edge. Okay, so it's visible, but not like part of your design visible. Um, carve your initials and your hour number in the edge of all your tiles so that when they come out of the kiln, if you were going to fire them, I would be able to identify who made them. And actually, you know what? Don't even bother to do your hour number. You're my only ceramics B class. Just put your initials. I'll know it comes from third hour. And people at home, same. Just carve your initials in the edge. Now, here's the bit uh, that's important because it's worth points. Uh, well, actually, all of that was worth points, but this is the way I'm going to grade you. Um, you're going to record a video that shows me all your tiles, all the sides, close up, and you're going to submit it for 30 points. So up on the screen, here's my little sample video and let me see if I can make the cursor here we go um, you don't need to talk you can turn the sound off 
You just need to show me each tile, each side for around five seconds each. Um, I didn't write the initials in the edges of mine, but you're going to also show me the, the initials as you're holding up your tiles. If you don't want to be in the picture yourself, you don't have to be. You can just kind of be off to the side and hold your tiles in front of the camera. I would strongly recommend using your Chromebook to do this because your Chromebook does record videos. If you don't know how, I will show you. It's very easy. And then the file is just saved on your Chromebook and you can just upload it very easily to Schoology. If you're using your phone, you're using up your memory in your phone by recording these videos. I know you can delete it right away, but it's just, um, if you have your Chromebook, I would encourage you to use your Chromebook. But if you are gonna use your phone, please use your phone, not this way, the way that you would like hang on to it to, to talk, do it the, the landscape way. That way it records your video wider so I can see it bigger when I'm grading it. So set your phone this way, not this way, if you're recording your video. And just um, prop it up like, right in front of you. Maybe like set your Chromebook up and then put your phone against the Chromebook and record toward yourself, holding the little um, tiles. What I don't want is I don't want you to take your phone and like zoom it around your tile like this, because that's gonna give me a headache as I'm trying to, to like follow your twisty, turny, roller coastery video. So please have your camera stationary and just turn the tiles like you saw me doing in the, the video there. Then the second thing you're gonna do on Schoology, I've created the video assignment already and I've also created the artist statement assignment. So an artist statement, is a way for an artist to be reflective about what they've done, to think about what they've done, and to talk to people about what they've done. So if someone views the work, they can read the artist statement and understand a little bit better about the process that went into making that item. So when I read your artist statement, I'm going to learn more about what you were thinking as you were making the piece. So this is the prompt, the, the bullet points on the left. What was the theme for your tiles? What would you title this wind chime if you were gonna glaze and assemble it? Which tools did you use the most to make the stamped designs? How do your designs show texture and value? How do your designs show repetition and movement? And do you plan to fire any of these tiles? If yes, consider donating a dollar to help cover clay and glaze. Um, if you can't uh, make a donation at this time, but you still want your tiles fired, that is totally fine. So what I ask is that you copy this prompt and then put it in Microsoft Word or put it in Google Docs and then actually type out a paragraph that answers these questions, because an artist statement is a paragraph. So my answers to these questions about my tiles uh, would go something like this. My theme for my tiles was Minnesota, so the, tile, or the title would be Minnesota Made. On one tile, I used designs that highlighted the Twin Cities by making stars radiate out from our city. On another, I made snowflakes to reflect our snowy winters. On the last one, I tried to make a plaid pattern because we are associated with Paul Bunyan and other lumberjacks. My tiles show texture because I stamped my popsicle stick designs to make imprints on the clay that feel bumpy. And they show value because the imprints appear to be darker because of the shadows. My tiles show repetition because I use the same designs across each tile front and back to build up more complexity. And they show movement by leading your eye across the tile and around the back. I will definitely fire these. So your paragraph is going to answer those questions in whatever way makes sense to you. Um, and then that's, that uh, Word document or um, doc, uh, Google Doc, will be uploaded to Schoology for 20 points. So the video and this artist statement are your only two assignments for today that are due by 3 p.m. You'll finish them in class, so you won't need to worry. Now, um, the next thing I want to give you a little heads up about is a uh, plate assignment. I'm just giving you all the information now, and then you'll be able to go to work on all the things you need to do. So the plate assignment is, um, we're gonna start that kind of officially tomorrow. We'll do the clay work tomorrow. Um, people at home, uh, the things you're gonna need to find are a little blue hexagonal plate. It looks like this, people at home. People who are here, you can also use this plate too if you like this shape. This could also be the shape of your plate. But people at home, yours looks like this. Or if you have a different plate you want to use, you can do that too. And what we're going to be creating is a plate, uh, which is a vessel that has a shallow, uh, circular form, which you eat food from or you serve food from. So it does need that little rise around the edge so that the food you put on there doesn't just roll right off the edge. 
Um, so that's going to be an important thing to, to make sure that you have. So the official assignment is to create a ceramic plate by using a pre-existing plate as a mold. So people at home have a paper plate. People who are here, I have a bunch of plates here that you'll be able to choose from to be able to shape your plate. We're going to be laying a slab of clay on top of that plastic or metal plate. Um, the lip must be higher than the center of the plate, and there must be a subtle foot on the bottom. And I'll talk more about that as we go. And then the, the, the design technique we're going to use on this, I'm kind of excited about this. We're going to use paper resist. So if you look up on the screen, paper resist means cutting out paper, sticking it to the clay while the clay is still wet, and then painting engobe over the top. If you remember from ceramics A, engobe is colored clay slip. So you paint it over once the paper is stuck down, and then you get to peel the paper off, and it's so satisfying to peel that paper off, and you get these really sharp edges wherever the paper was protecting the clay and so there's a lot of versatility a lot of different ways that you could use paper to create these really beautiful complex masked designs so people at home you have two colors of engo in your bag that you'll be able to use for this people who are here you'll have six colors of engo that you can choose from to do the this paper masking design um, here's another example of paper masking um, so all the white bits are where the paper was, then they painted over it with uh, a turquoise end gobe, then they peel the paper off. That's how that works. So um, that's the only other thing I'm gonna ask you to do for today, whether you're at home or whether you're here. After you've done all the tile stuff, recorded your video, done the artist statement, et cetera, you're gonna choose your plate. So people at home, you're probably gonna use this um, hexagon plate. Uh, people who are here, there are plates over here on this wedging table. And there's some unique plates here. If you could choose the fern plates, or the fish plates, or the um, olive tray plates. So there's lots of different plates. There's also more traditional plates, too. And if you like this hexagon shape, I have more of these. You can use these shapes, too. It's kind of up to you. But I do have some there for you to pick from. And the reason that's important is because if this is the plate shape that you're going to be making, your three sketches should all be based on the same shape. There's no sense like sketching um, round plates and like experimenting with different designs that could go on a round plate if the shape that you're going to make is the shape of a leaf. So that's what you're going to sketch and base your designs upon. Whew. All right. So that's kind of today in a nutshell. I don't have to demo anything because I feel like Everything's probably pretty uh, straightforward. People who are here, any questions about any of that stuff before I let you get to it? Okay, um, so I'm gonna let you guys get to it, pull out your tiles, start your smoothing, camping. People who are at home, stay with me. All right, we're gonna go in my little office here, oops. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm also going to stop recording.